Pro Tools 10 comes with a lot of extra power. If you have a look at this session that I've got right here, this session is in 83.3. I've decided to put every single track in this session into elastic time. So we've got about, it's not a huge session, 20, 30 tracks. So we've got them all in elastic time. Currently 83.3, let's move the entire session up to 100 beats per minute. Um, we have a lot of VIs in here as well. One of them being Transfuser, which is one of our flagship uh, rhythm creators. We're very, very happy with this plugin. It's still very, very popular. So there's one of our main beats and underneath it you'll see I'm doing a teeny weeny bit of processing. So the first plugin I've got up is the channel strip. Now, let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to talk about these things as they come up because they're very, very exciting and they get used a lot in this session. The channel strip comes with every single version of Pro Tools 10. So it doesn't matter whether you're working in a native version or whether you've bought an HDX system, everybody gets the channel strip, okay? Now the channel strip is not just based on the Euphonic System 5 console, it's actually a complete model of it. So you're getting an incredibly high-end channel strip that is an exact algorithmic model of a very, very high-end console. Now this is modeled to the point where if you actually put settings in the channel strip in Pro Tools and you're on a System 5 console, which we're not right now, and you do exactly the same settings on the, the console, they are that exact that they actually cancel each other out. So that's very, very cool. It also means that if you're working in your bedroom, your, your, your back room, your garage on your own little hit, and you take it into a professional studio and you've used a lot of channel strips, they have that plugin, which again, we're very happy about. Helps create a flow, right? Now, you're looking at it on the screen right now as a compacted version. There's a couple of different reasons for this. Firstly, it means that once you've done your tweaking, you can get the whole plugin out of the way. Okay, so that's very cool. In this case, also, we're all working on a slightly smaller screen resolution. So if I have the whole thing open, I can't see it all. Not everybody is working on a 1900 by 1600 screen resolution. So this is really gonna help the way you work. So all I have to do if I want to expand the dynamic section is hit this little arrow here. And then we have, so we have the expander gate, we have the compressor limiter, we have the side chain, and then we have a summary of all of them. I'm gonna close that again. Now I'm gonna bring in the EQ and the filters. You can dig really, really deep here. Let me just press play for a second and uh, that way you can hear exactly what we're doing. Let me bypass the other plugin I've got in here as well. All right, we'll get to that in a second. sounding pretty cool, it's nice and clean. However, one thing I do want to do is I want to choose exactly the order that I use this in. And you can actually adjust the chain of the process. So if you're looking on the screen right now, I can choose from EQ to filter to dynamics, EQ, dynamics, filter, dynamics first and then EQ and then filter or filter, dynamics, EQ. Now that's very cool because if you've worked in digital audio for a while or you remember back in the analog days, the chain of events really changes the way things sound. Now the other thing that you have here that helps you is the fact that you can actually choose which of those events in the chain are actually active and unactive. So in this case, I can actually choose not to use the filters if I want to, or I can just use the EQ and the filters and I can turn off the compressor and the dynamics. So all of this comes in a plugin that compacts down to that. It's a very, very powerful tool. You can fit an awful lot of these into a session and it gives you a great amount of flexibility. So I really do impress on you that if you've got Pro Tools 10 or if you've downloaded the 30 day demo, have a mess around with this plugin and you'll really see the power of it. So now let's move on to the other plugin in the chain. This is a third party plugin. It's from a small company called Cytomic. Very, very cool plugin. Now, the reason I'm talking about a third party plugin in this case is because we have a new plugin format called AAX. AAX stands for Avid Audio Extension. Now, the reason that we've done a whole new plugin format isn't because we were bored, it's because with the 
move that we're making to help everybody get to 64-bit in the future, we needed to work out a way that we could actually help get all those speeds up and running and get those third-party plug-in companies up and running as well. And the current TDM and RTAS are just not capable of 64-bit. So we've come up with a plug-in format and a new SDK that makes it easier for third parties to actually create new plugins, port them across from old, and get into Pro Tools really easily. Now with Pro Tools 10, it comes with a few AAX plugins, like the new Down Mixer, which I'll show you in a while, the Channel Strip, that's an AAX plugin. But a lot of these third party companies that we love working with are already spinning out great AAX plugins, and Cytomix the Glue is one of them. It's an amazing compressor. It can be used on a master bus or drums or keys or anything else. Now, right now, I'm using a, a rock parallel room, and if I, uh, let's just uh, bypass it for a second, then I'll bring it in. You can hear what it does, it fattens everything up without actually taking anything away from it. So again, head to their website, Google them, and have a mess around with that plugin, and then go to your dealer, preferably SoundPure right now, because that's where we are. Have a look at this plugin, because it is very, very cool. While we're talking about plugins, let's go to uh, another plugin that we've done some major, major tweaking with. This is a Digirack. Reverb, it's Deverb. Deverb's been around for a while. One of the things that people do a lot in Pro Audio is you take a drum and you go up into Audio Suite and you select in other, you'd select reverse and you create a duplicate of it and reverse it. And then you'd try and sync the two back up together to get a nice, really cool reverse effect and then put reverb on it. Now, we at Avid decided that we'd do that entire process for you. So, look at the screen right now and you will see that at the bottom of this plugin, there is a new button called reverse. So this is what we've got right now. Let me just solo this. This is a little four count that's gonna come in before the vocals. Sounds fine, but it sounds a bit boring to me, so I wanna be able to spice it up a bit. So I've got this reverb here. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna press reverse. Now, you saw a few things going on on the screen there at the same time. It's basically a macro that goes off, duplicates the file, reverses it for you, syncs it back up, and then puts the reverb on it. So now when I press play, Very cool. Now we've added that not just to our plugins, so all of our delays and our reverbs, any third party delay or third party reverb automatically will get that reverse button on the bottom. So again, it's another thing that we've added, little small things in lots of different places in Pro Tools 10 to really, really help your creative flow. Another plugin that we've done some tweaking to is Verify, another Avid plugin that's been around for a while but needed a bit of a polish for Pro Tools 10. Now, if you see on the screen, we've actually made some new selection options for you. So you've got a fit to selection or you've got an extend and you've also got fades on or fades off while you're slowing down or speeding up. Now, the piece of audio I've got right here is a section of chord that I took from this remix. And what I wanna do is I wanna like create a build up before it goes into the chorus again. So I'm just gonna press play so you hear um, how it sounds right now. It's not gonna fit in and that's why we're gonna change it. So it sounds a bit like this. Now you know why we need to do verify on it because it just sits out and sticks out a bit like a sore thumb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it. I'm going to go fit to selection and I want fades on because I want it to build up at that beginning and I'm gonna press process and render. Right, so now if I press play, That's a lot better. Now, little things like that make your life a lot easier because it means that you don't have to do as much tweaking without actually losing your creative flow.